constrained. Fun to watch them work in pregame where Eric Backage, the head coach, is literally out there doing base running drills with his players. Nolan Rocky to Cax, who will make the tag and a collision there. Uh-oh. 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 They better stay off the field. Yep. I, yep. Everybody stay off the field. Getting a little feisty here, a little chip on the shoulder. The Clemson Tigers here trying to stay alive in this Super Regional. Well, if the home crowd wasn't, <laughs> wasn't awake early, they sure are now. Cags and Naraki getting in a little scuffle here. Fortunately, cooler heads prevail, but that one could have gotten ugly. Neither player backing down. Welcome back to Clemson, South Carolina. This just happened a moment ago, the third out of the inning. The Rocky and Caglione collide down that first baseline, and instead of just kind of walking away, one little extra shove mm -hmm. by each guy, it looked like. And yeah. To me, that's there's nothing there. Now, yeah. like if they're just reviewing the play, you got two dudes that end up banging into each other in a in a very natural baseball play. And they both kind of go back for more, and there's a little like that, to me, that does not rise to the level of either playing yeah. player being ejected. And I, I hope there's a little grace for the adrenaline of the moment and the nature of the play that was in front of them. Well, Berkey, they're, inter they're, they're reviewing right now what's called in the baseball video review world, the malicious contact is what they're trying to determine in our replay video operations center in Pittsburgh. They're in contact with our crew here in Clemson, South Carolina. But I'm with you. You know, it's one of those things. Maybe warn each team. That yeah, we're not going to have sure. any more of this. For sure. The next sure. next time, we're, we're, we're throwing people out. But let's just play ball. I mean, that's a unique play. Cags took issue with the fact that Naraki throws his shoulder. But to me, he's protecting himself. Like, that's a huge person in front of you. And he's just protecting himself. Cags takes issue with that. He's certainly allowed to do that in a high adrenaline moment. And there's a little shove and both players move on. Like we, we, we can't legislate the passion and adrenaline out of the game. This is a contact play. We don't have a lot of these, but this is one of those where it was a natural contact play. Two players get a little worked up. Like let's, let's let cooler heads prevail here and play ball. Again, I, I don't know if the review has any, if we're looking at, at players coming off the bench, I don't know, because you and I obviously did a game earlier this year where that was the case. But if it's just the play itself, I'd like to think we're just going to move on from that. Yeah. Well, that man might be a little concerned waiting for this decision because uh, if Jack Caglione is thrown out of this game for any reason. He is out for tomorrow as well if there is a game three and would be if they get to Omaha. Well, I guess he'd be out tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. just tomorrow. Yeah. Now again, if if they're if they're looking at players leaving the dugout. And something tells me, Dave, by the by the way this is taking so long, they probably are, right? Otherwise, I would think we would have a decision by now. The Florida players, I think both players, I mean, at some point as a as a teammate, you're you're gonna go out there and protect your guy. It didn't look like anybody's trying to heighten or instigate the moment. And I just hope we can move on and play ball. You'd hate to see anybody from either team not be able to participate in a game like this.
Well, you know, Sully is on pins and needles right now. This is tense moments. Not not only is it your star player, but obviously your your starting pitcher who is off to a really tidy start in this ball game. Well, we just get word that they're actually looking to see about players leaving. Yeah, the dugout area. That's what it has to be for it to be this long. Yeah. There's no way they're they're only reviewing the play. And to clarify, Berkey, if, if Florida were to win this game and something happened to Caglione and he's thrown out of this game, he'd have to miss the first game at Omaha. Yeah, I mean, the, the rule is a game for a position player and four for a pitcher. Now he's both. Now this is the wide view. You see the players coming out of the dugout. And now the question will be from there, you know, your the rule says you're not allowed to leave your position. You're not allowed to come out of the dugout. And there, nobody got involved in the pushing and shoving from either dugout, but certainly there were players that left. Well, we had a similar situation to this, unfortunately. We experienced yeah. it in Starkville, Mississippi State, and Georgia had one of these incidents on a play at the plate that involved a catcher tagging a runner, a little extra curricular at the plate when the play was being made. Both benches emptied, and it took 40 minutes before we yeah. were able to well, get some you, baseball play. And you saw it right there with the angle we just showed you. Like, Especially if you're a, a pitcher, a lot of pitchers are in – a hoodie or a pullover like you can't identify the number sometimes so that's where these things can end up really dragging on you end up having to identify players off the roster if you're going to go to that point and dave i hate to say it but the fact it's taking this long that makes me think makes that, me think they are yeah i mean if you're just looking at the play this thing would have taken a couple minutes tops well uh, uh you know i think I'll say this, I, I think replay has added a lot to the game, um, taken a lot of issues away from some things that maybe can be cleaned up, but it's moments like this I think that it takes yeah. something away from the game, and I think that's the part that needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Well, and I think this rule too, like there, there should be some, some language in the rule where, yeah, if a player leaves the dugout or leaves his position to instigate or heighten a tussle i get it right but like if if they're just coming out on the field to be there in case they need to protect their teammate and and it doesn't go past that to me we should be able to play ball and move on like two dudes shoved each other it's a baseball game like let's go back to our dugouts and play it's a physical hyped up moment they shove each other they move on Neither neither team throws a punch or shoves anybody else after that. There's no physical contact, right? Am I seeing that correctly? Do you yeah. see? Yeah. Well, there's nothing after that. Like, why can't we just go play ball? I, I'm with you. Let, let's issue some warnings. Yes. This happens again. Anything remotely close to this, some people are not going to be around. But it's... Uh, I mean, to, to tell kids they're not going to go out there and protect their teammate... And for kids to actually be mindful of that in a high-intensity moment like this is not fair to the kids. It's also not fair that when they do that, then their day is done. Like, I just, there has to be a time and a place where we can legislate outside of the letter of the rule, especially in an environment like this. Well, hopefully we'll get some clarification on exactly what is going on here in seconds. So hopefully, once again, uh, our umpiring crew, and hopefully this will be the last time this yeah. happens in the NCAA tournament where 
during SEC baseball's uh, games, regular season tournament, umpires having a microphone and can announce to the crowd and to us what's going on. We don't have that system available now. It'll be in Omaha, but it won't be here, obviously, in the Supers and the Regional. Hopefully that'll all change next year. I yeah. think that's the plan moving forward. But uh, we are going to try to get whatever information they are discussing on the field relayed to us as quickly as possible. Look, man, you, you could kind of sense it today here early at the ballpark. Clemson knows what's at stake. It's edgy. It, it, it's been a long That's time right. since they've been in Omaha, and they are hosting the Super Regional. It's been an electric atmosphere two weekends in a row. They're feeling the pressure. Yeah. Right now. It's edgy. It's yeah. in their own ballpark. They're trying to get back to Omaha for the first time in 14 years. Like, it's an elimination game. You've got one of the biggest stars in the game opposing you. Like, there's a contact play. Things get heightened. Like, it's it's a very natural occurrence in a big time competitive sporting event. I mean, now Eric Backage on his way out of the field. I don't see anybody talking to Florida, so I can't imagine this is going to be good news for him. The other thing I sympathize with the Clemson kids about Dave is it happened right in front of them. Yeah. Right. It's right. Had it know, happened the other side, you yeah, might have had the same reaction. Yeah. Florida, you I see, you yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. it's 50 yards away from the Florida kids. It's right in the front porch of the of the Clemson dugout. That is Billy Van Raphorst, our crew chief, talking to Eric Backage. He has been around a long time and been to Omaha a bunch of times, trying to explain things. Coach Backage, who is based on body language, not real happy with what he was just told. Well, and, and I just saw him say, you say something like, our guy's coming off the field. And the only player from Clemson that was on the field was Jack Craig. Because he had hit the double there with two outs. So Eric Back is still trying to get some information from Billy Van Raphorst, who's telling him enough is enough. Yeah. Billy, the crew chief here, is Eric Backage calling somebody out of his dugout. And it's Jack Wright. Interesting that he's calling Jack Crichton out. This is really interesting. Oh, what? No, why would, what, what? Eric Backage called out Jack Crichton. And Crichton has been ejected. Both benches have been warned. Jack Crichton apparently just got ejected for leaving his position in the skirmish. And he is the only one who has been ejected. And both benches have now been warned. So we need to keep an eye on where number three was. So Crichton, Crichton's running third base. I mean, he's, he's running from second to third. The play, the tag is made. The tag is made. Here comes Crichton. He sees the out's been made. Now, what does Crichton do? He just, he just comes over. I mean, there might have been a, a few words in there, but... Wow. There comes Crichton. There's three right there. Comes comes into the mix. You see Milwaukee and, and Cags are kind of ending it. Luke Heyman standing there, standing guard for his squad. Oh boy, Berkey. I just tell I mean here comes Crichton. There's some language at the end. Maybe it's the fact that he that they're holding him back a little bit. I mean, but come on. 
Oh, oh man. Now, I will say that the whole thing there at the end of, of, of Crichton coming out of the dugout was, was also very interesting as well. But, man, I tell you, uh, in all that, for Jack Crichton, who's coming around third, going back towards his dugout anyway, whew, that's a tough pill to swallow for this, for this Clemson bunch. Oh, you see, there was a left hand that got our home plate umpire, Greg Harmon. It was not much, but certainly making contact with an umpire is one of the biggest no-nos you could possibly do. So perhaps that's where the line was drawn with Jack Crichton. That's a rough one. That's that's about all I could come up yeah, with. Yeah, that's all you could that's all you can muster right there. He's just he has some contact with an umpire. Umpire having contact with him too. I'm gonna tell you, there's been an insertion at first base now for Clemson as Tristan McGlady, a freshman out of Harlem, Georgia, will now take over.